Good morning, ma'am. You stated on direct examination that you did not murder Mr. Chapman. That's, that's correct, ma'am. And you do recognize that that is the charge of this jury to determine not you, correct? Yes, ma'am. So you, you know that you killed him, correct? And Very, you know it's this jury's job. Ma'am, I'd like to answer your question. Sure. If you, can you repeat the question? You killed him, correct? It's unfortunate. You shot yeah, him in the face and heart, correct? shot him, and he did that. Ma'am, I'm really trying to answer your it's question. It's a yes or no question. You killed him, correct? It's unfortunate. You shot him in the face and heart. I'd really like to answer your question. Yes or no question? It was unfortunate that I had to discharge my weapon, and Mr. Chapman did die. So that's a yes, that you killed him? Uh, you yes. shot him in the face and heart? I did shoot him, yes, ma'am. And it's this jury's job to determine whether you murdered him or not? Yes, ma'am. Let's go back to the beginning. You indicated on direct examination that you approached Mr. Chapman and you said to him, I suppose you know why I'm here. Did you not? I didn't say in that tone, ma'am. You said to him, I suppose you know why I'm here. Yes, I did. Those are the words you said? Yes, ma'am. You've talked a lot about your training. Is that anywhere in your training that you walk up to someone and you indicate to them, I suppose you know why I'm here? They don't teach us specific... That's a yes or no question. No, ma'am, it's not a yes or no question. That's not in your training? They don't teach us specifically what we're supposed to say. They teach us concepts so that we can speak to people without aggravating anyone. So at no point do you actually ask whether Mr. Chapman knows why you're there. Well, he did answer. In this incident, at no point did you ask Mr. Chapman if he knew why you were there, correct? I don't know if you could take that as a form of a I'm question or not. Did you ask but him a question? I, I'm trying to answer your question, ma'am. Did you ask him a question? I don't know if you could take that as a question or not. It could be interpreted as a question. I'm really not trying to so argue with know. you, ma'am. I'm just trying to clarify it so that we can all question. understand. So you don't know whether I suppose you know why I'm here is a question or not? I suppose some people could take it as a question. So you take it as a question? I, I would think it, it's a statement that's interrogative that would pr prompt a response. So I would think, yes, it's a question, ma'am. So that's a question. I suppose you know why I'm here. That's a question. I would think so, yes, ma'am. Okay. So you indicated to him you suppose that he knows why you're there. Did you hear Mr. Chapman's music playing? Much later. Much later. So at the beginning, you didn't I, recognize that he had music playing. I don't think he had music playing when I approached him. I know later in the incident, I could hear his phone ringing. So you don't We can think, hear that captured on the video. You don't think he had music when you approached him, but by the end, and what we could hear on the video that's been playing in court, <coughs> it's now playing. I believe that was his phone ringing, best, best I could tell. Okay, so that's a phone ringing, so it rang for a very long, for a very extended period of time? 
Ma'am, I don't know. I, don't, I don't know what that noise was, but I can tell you I didn't hear it when I first approached know. Mr. Chapman. Okay, you don't know. All right, so let's talk about what you had on you, on your service belt. You indicated that you keep your ass, which is the baton, in your car. Yes, ma'am. So you chose not to put that on your belt. That's for you to decide. Yes, right. ma'am. We are authorized to... Yes or no? No, it's not a yes or no question, ma'am. Yes or no? You can ask um, our policy, at least at the time of the incident, was of the three less than lethal items, the officer gets to make the determination which two were, carry, were to carry. And um, like many other officers, I chose to carry the taser and the pepper spray. I feel those are the most effective at gaining compliance. That policy does not say that you cannot carry all three, does it? It doesn't forbid us from carrying all three, no ma'am. Okay, but you chose to carry the two, the ass, you chose the two to carry the pepper spray and the taser? That's correct. Okay. And to keep your asp in the car? Yes, ma'am. We're not even required to keep it in the car, but I choose to. You choose to keep it in the car. And what else did you have on your, you, you also had your radio on you, correct? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, approach your honor, retrieve exhibit number 26. You recognize this? Yes, ma'am. It's a police radio. Is this your radio? I believe so. This is your radio. Yes, ma'am. Motorola six thousand. I you don't, don't know. know the model number. You don't know. Okay. This is the radio you had on you on this day. I believe it is. Yes. Right. What is this? Point to this orange button. What is that? That's an orange button, ma'am. What is it? What does it do? Um, it sends an emergency signal. Okay. To who? Uh, to the dispatcher. Sends an emergency signal to the dispatcher. Yes, ma'am. The function of that button, when you push it, it's called a code one button. It sends an emergency signal, such as if I'm under duress and I can't get on my radio or something to that effect. The dispatcher will respond to us, call communications code one is what they'll say. And um, this is, so ma'am, I'm is trying the, to. I'm not done. They'll they'll yeah, call. At this point, our object is non-responsive. She asked them what the button was. Oh. <laughs> they'll call two or three times. I can't remember exactly how many times, and they give you a total of 15 seconds to respond to indicate that it was an accidental press of the code one button or something like that. After about 15 seconds, the dispatcher will determine that you're in an emergency situation, and they'll cut off your radio in case you're under duress, so that anyone who may be holding you or something. Um, can't hear the police communications and they'll start sending units to you. May I approach the clerk, Your Honor? Thank you. We know that your radio was in proper working condition on the date of this offense, correct? I'd agree it was, yes, ma'am. We know that because you called uh, and you, you called dispatch. You did shots fired, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you called dispatch to stage medics, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And 
you just explain to the jury what this emergency button does and that it sends the police the dispatch a message that you're in trouble and we also know that they know your last known location was at Walmart correct yes ma'am okay and so you also indicated on direct examination that at some point you felt like Mr. Chapman was stronger than you were right yes ma'am and that was when you were at the car this was before you tasted him. Who had the phone? Who had the phone? Thank you. That was when you were at the car, right? You're asking, did I discover that he was stronger than me while we were wrestling on the car? Correct. Yes, ma'am, that's when I discovered that. That's when you discovered that. So this is when you have him against the car. You yes. discovered that he is stronger than you. Yes, ma'am. And you also stated that at the car is when you made the decision that you wanted to tase him. Yes, ma'am. And you indicated that you did this by drive stun and not probe mode. And that's correct. And you took the cartridge out. Yes, ma'am. Did you somehow take the cartridge out using one hand? No, ma'am. What I did, may I stand, Your Honor? When I was holding Mr. Chapman against the car, and I had my left hand on his left hand, trying to control his wrist that was, the wrist of the hand that was in the pocket, um, I let go of that, but I continued to hold on to his upper arm like this, and I'm leaning into him. I drew my taser and brought it up and removed the cartridge like this. So you were strong enough to hold him down with one arm and still be able to remove that cartridge from the taser? At this point, his level of resistance was such that I could control him with that method. Um, and and that. I was using my whole body at that point <laughs> against only a portion of his body. His level of resistance hadn't increased past that point yet. Okay. So you at least had one hand that you could work with at this point in time? Yes, ma'am. And at no point where you started to discover that he was stronger than you, did you decide to press that orange button? At this point that we're discussing where I'm removing the cartridge from the taser, I believe I'm still dealing with a resistive shoplifting suspect. But you decided and, to tase him at this please, point. Please let me finish. I'm still dealing with a resistive shoplifting suspect. The orange button is really designed for if you're under duress, um, if you have a gun to your head, something to that effect. If I had pressed the orange button, when dealing with someone who's simply resisting, it's just not appropriate for the situation. I'm going to have a hundred cops there to deal with someone that's just just resisting at this point. So that's not designed for you to be able to call for backup. Well, it would bring backup, but what I'm trying to express to you is that's an end of the world button. And at the point we're discussing, when I've made the decision to um, drive stun him, it's not the end of the world at this point. He's just a resisting shoplifting suspect, and that's why I chose to use that low level of force. So at this it's point. a taser is a low level of force? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you stated on direct that you were in fear because he disarmed you of your taser. Yes, ma'am. And you indicated to this jury that disarming a police officer is a felony offense. Yes, ma'am. Did ma you not? Is. Yes, ma'am, it is. So that's still, we're not worried about this at this point. We're not worried enough to press the orange button. I think we're asking the same question. No, sir. You're not concerned enough to press the orange button at this point. All right. I want to be clear it's a yes at no what question. Ma'am, it's not a yes or no question. I'm trying to clarify so I can answer your question correctly. Let me ask it again. Okay. You indicated that you were disarmed of your taser, a yes, felony offense, but you are not concerned enough to press the orange button at this point. That's what I was getting at. So you're saying after I was disarmed of my taser, you're, you're asking if I was concerned at that point enough to where I should press the orange button. Is that what you're asking? I, I'm not saying that you were disarmed of your taser. You indicated yeah. that you were disarmed of your taser, correct? I'm just trying to clarify. Yes, after I was disarmed of my taser, Let's I'm going to try and answer the question as best as I can. That's after okay. I was disarmed of my taser, um, I would have, it would have been great to press the orange button. There's two reasons why that wouldn't have been appropriate in this situation, and I'll tell you both of them. First, um, I would have had to have taken my eyes off the subject and turned to find it. It's not something you use on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, most officers go their entire 20-year career without ever having to push that button. And second, 
Um, as I stated earlier, it's going to take 15 or 20 seconds before the dispatcher actually realizes that I'm in an emergency situation. The orange button wouldn't have been a good option, and I didn't have time to get onto my actual microphone and call for backup. At this point, this is going very fast. Um, this went from a resistive subject to an attack very quickly, and all I had time to do was try and protect myself. So you had enough time to throw a cartridge out of your taser? That was before he changed from a resistive subject to an assaultive subject. So you had enough time. You indicated before that happened, you started to realize he was stronger than you, correct? Before you tased him. This is what you said. I think that's fair. Yes, ma'am. And you had enough time to pull a cartridge out of the taser. Yes, ma'am. And you also have on that radio something that's up here. Correct? Yes, we have a microphone up here, ma'am. And so, even if you didn't feel like reaching around, you had something up here that you could use, correct? You knew that there was a microphone up here. Yes, ma'am. At the point that I determined that this was an emergency and I needed to call for assistance was the point where the taser had been, where I'd been disarmed in my taser. And at that point, things began moving so fast. I didn't have a chance to get to my radio. I had to get something to protect myself. Okay, let's talk about and the this. radio isn't immediately going to protect me. Let's talk about this disarming. You also stated on direct that he turned and your taser, you don't know what happened to it. I know he knocked the taser away from you. You know he knocked it away from you. Yes, ma'am. But when you say disarm, he didn't take your taser out of your hand. He didn't physically have my taser. He disarmed he me of it, it, but he didn't take it and use it against he me. He did not take it and use it against you. Okay. Let's talk about your training. Let's go back to that. You are talking about resisting, you're talking about disarming, and you're talking about the types of offenses that they are. So you've had legal training yes, in the course of your training as a police officer. Yes, ma'am. So you're familiar with Virginia Code Section 18.257, subsection C, and that's assault on a law enforcement officer, correct? Um, familiar with it. I wouldn't be able to identify it just by the code number, but I'm familiar with it. With it. Okay. I've uh, been assaulted before. Okay, and you realize that there is a code section for resisting arrest as well. Uh, you talked about resisting, so I'm assuming you know that there's a code section. Certainly. Okay, so that under Virginia Law 18.2-479.1 is resisting arrest. Uh, I, again, I wouldn't know the code so number, these but are, I, I'm, these are, I'm familiar with the code. So these are code sections under Virginia law that criminally punish resisting arrest an assault on law enforcement officer, and you also brought up disarming a police officer, and that's 18.2-3.21. So you're familiar with all of these? I'm familiar, yes ma'am, okay. through the course of my employment. All right. Let's talk about this taser again. You indicated that you wanted to drive stun tase him because it was pain control, but it was less painful than using the probe. That's what you said on direct. Yes, ma'am. That's my understanding of how the device works. But you heard Mr. Childs, the expert that the defense call, indicate that these are just as painful. One is just as painful as the other. You recall him saying that, right? Yes, ma'am. But I can tell you from my experience on the street, having used the taser on subjects before, it's my opinion from, from actually using it. Go it's my opinion from actually using the device in practical situations that I believe that it's less painful and that's why I chose to use something that I believe was less painful. So that's what you think? That's what you think? Yes ma'am, right? that's what I think. But the expert who was here testified that they are just as painful. Well ma'am, I can only tell you what I think. You were here when Mr. Childs testified, correct? Yes ma'am. And you heard him. He was a defense's expert that the defense called, correct? Yeah. And that's what he said. Uh, ma'am, I can only testify to my beliefs. Did you hear him? Uh, yes, ma'am. And that's what he said, correct? I believe that's what he said. He also said that using the probes is for the central nervous system to override your muscles, correct? Yes, that's, I heard, heard him say, say that. that. Yes, ma'am. And you also heard him say that using drive stun is pure pain compliance. My understanding of what Did he was saying, say my understanding of what he was saying was that they both cause pain, equal amount of pain, Sir, as I'm we not, discussed a second I'm ago. I'm asking you what you heard him say. Did you hear him say 
the last thing he said, did you hear him say that drive stun was for pure pain compliance? If that's what he said, then I'll take your word for it, ma'am. Did he say it? I don't remember his exact words, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm really trying. You don't know if he said it? I don't know his exact words, but I won't say he didn't say it. It's the Were best I can do. Were you here in the courtroom when he testified? I was here in the courtroom, yes, ma'am. You took notes, correct? Uh, yes, ma'am, I did take notes. But you don't know if he said that it was for pure well, pain? I don't know if he said that verbatim, ma'am. I'm really trying. I, I won't you argue with you on it. I, I, I agree he might have said it. How about that? You don't know? I don't know. Okay. We talked about this use of force policy that is defense's exhibit number five, correct? Yes. You talked about that in your direct examination? Yes, ma'am. That, that was the Portsmouth Police Department policy, correct? Yes, ma'am. And that's just like if somebody works at McDonald's, McDonald's has a policy. I assume so, yes, ma'am. You know? You've had other jobs, correct? But it's the policy of the Portsmouth Police Department. Yes, ma'am. It is their policy, jobs. and I follow the policy of the Portsmouth Police Sir, Department. you've had other jobs, correct? Yes, ma'am, I have. And different jobs have policy manuals, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that's Portsmouth Police Department's policy manual. Yes, that's and the police department. And you've had legal trainings as well. Ma'am, I'd really like to answer your questions. Can you please not cut me you've off? You've had anymore? legal training as well. Yes, ma'am, I've had legal training. And you realize that this policy does not in any way supersede Virginia law? You know, I assume so. I assume that's correct. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. The, I, my understanding is it was written to follow Virginia law. Okay. You're not a lawyer, but you were a police officer, correct? My understanding was it was written to follow police. You're not a lawyer, but you were a police officer, correct? Yes, ma'am. I'm a police officer. You were a police officer, correct? Yes, ma'am. And when you were a police officer, you were tasked with enforcing Virginia law, correct? Yes, ma'am. So you're familiar with it? Yes, ma'am. Very familiar, because you've been trained, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so based on your knowledge as a police officer, if you went to any place and somebody was breaking the law, but store policy made that okay, does that supersede Virginia law? I'm sorry, Judge. I'd object. I'm not clear about the question. Okay. You have permission to approach and retrieve an exhibit. You, this looks like a fair and accurate depiction of yourself on the date of the event, April 22nd, 2015. I believe so. Permission to publish to the jury. the incident, correct? Yes, ma'am. No marks on your face? No, ma'am. No marks on your person? No, ma'am. And when police officers responded to the scene and they inquired of you about how you were, you indicated that you were okay? That's correct. To multiple people? I believe so, yes, ma'am. Correct? You have on gloves here? Yes, ma'am. You indicated that Officer Manning's, Detective Manning's responded to the scene and you told him to put on gloves. Yes, ma'am. While I was doing chest compressions, I told him to put on you gloves. You told him to put on gloves. And so you never went to your car to get gloves out? I had gloves on my belt. When I was describing my belt right at the 6 o'clock position, I have a small pouch that carries two sets of uh, gloves. Okay. So you have gloves on your belt. So you never went out to the car to have to go get gloves. Not to get gloves. I went to the car to get my breathing mask to give rescue breaths. So when you started doing CPR, you did it without gloves on, but you had gloves on your belt. Right. I was in a hurry to try and get him first aid as soon as I possibly could. Okay. You indicated that there was 
blood on your hands, correct? Yes, ma'am. From doing CPR. Yes, ma'am. And you heard I.C. Torres, the medic, she described what was happening when she was giving CPR. You heard her testify, correct? I did. And you heard her testify that there was lots of blood everywhere. There was correct? a lot of blood, yes, ma'am. The amount of blood that you have on your hands, you didn't have a lot of blood on your hands, did you? Actually, it was a lot of blood. Um, blood dries up pretty quick, but it covered up my wrists um, in both fit pictures, um, and it was on both sides of my hands, and then I had more on my gloves, and I had it on my uniform. You had um, The state police took my pants and my shirt and my radio and most of my duty belt. It all had blood on it. So you had a dot here and there on your uniform, correct? No, ma'am, that's not so accurate. Had I had a quite a bit of blood. blood. all over your uniform. Yes, ma'am. And so the pictures that we have in evidence, if they don't depict that there's a lot of blood on your uniform, those pictures are, are wrong in some way. I think it might be difficult to see because blood is kind of dark when it goes into material and um, the uh, uniform is dark color, but I did have quite a bit of blood on me. I wasn't soaked in it, but I had a lot of smears. And um, So if what we see on your pants is like a dot, or if what we see on your shirt is like a dot, and we don't see blood all over your uniform, the picture you're saying does not accurately depict what was seen on that day in some way. Well, if you look, you may be able to see the blood on there. I'm asking you, if we look at it and we don't see it because pictures have already been put into evidence, those pictures have not shown blood all over your uniform, so you're saying that picture does not accurately depict what was happening at that time. Ma'am, I'm not really sure how to answer that question. I'm telling you it's a picture of me at the, at the scene of the incident, and I hadn't cleaned up after the incident when those pictures were taken. Um, I asked officer, uh, the other officers to take photos of me because I knew they needed to be taken as part of the investigation. So you don't know? Um, Going back you're to right. Yeah, question, I think that's know. probably the best answer. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how but to answer that. You know that you had no marks anywhere on your face. You had no marks anywhere on your person, correct? Yes, ma'am. Going back to this policy manual that the Portsmouth Police Department had, it talks about the use of force continuum and it talks about different techniques. And you indicated that you don't have to go as this verbatim, as this use of force continuum is dictated in here verbatim. You don't have to go down the line. You can skip over things if you want to. The premise of it is that you use the force appropriate to the situation, so you, you don't have to go from exactly one to the other. You'll go to the, the level of force that's appropriate to the situation you're dealing with. So it's a continuum, but really you just do what you feel like you need to do? It's what we're trained to do, yes ma'am. You indicated on direct examination that at the point where you started to have issues with the victim in this matter, you decided not to do any nerve control moves or anything. What do you mean by that? Can you clarify what you mean by issues, please? Well, when you started to realize that he was stronger than you were. Okay. So when we're up against the car and he's pushing and trying to get away from me and I right. can't get his hand out of his pocket, so you, is that the time frame before I taste it? not to do any type of nerve. I'm asking you, you refer to... And I'm still trying to get the time. You're saying before I taste him, correct? At any time you didn't do that, did you? No, I didn't. You didn't do any type of nerve. And what do you mean by that? Is that MMA? You do MMA? Um, nerve control techniques are not in MMA. Do you know MMA? Uh, several years ago, I did some training. So you yes, did mixed martial arts training? Yes, ma'am. Several years ago? Yes, ma'am. So that's prior to this incident? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you said that nerve control techniques are not a part of MMA. That's right. Okay, so what, these are nerve control techniques. What do you do? You can kind of hit someone somewhere and do nerve control to subdue them? <coughs> Is that what you're saying? I don't think that's really an accurate description. Okay, can you um, describe what you would what you mean by nerve control then? Nerve control isn't really um, the term terminology we use. It's more of a pressure point is what we're trained on. And there's certain places in the body. There's a, a, a nerve here in between your bicep um, and uh, tricep specifically is the first one that comes to mind. 
that if you push on it correctly, it can cause a certain amount of pain in a person, and you can use that to try and gain compliance with a person. So you know where different pressure points can be done at? I know where some are, yes ma'am. You know where some are, and you brought it up on direct, that you had not done any of these things on the victim in this case. I don't remember mentioning, but I didn't do any of those. You did not. And you also, we just talked about you, you know you did some MMA training. Yes ma'am. Okay, and so, in your manual that you all have, it talks about hard control techniques, tactic maneuvers, taking people to the ground. You didn't try to do any of that. Well, ma'am, none of the mixed martial arts techniques are approved by I'm our department. You about your I, I know, and I'm trying to explain that none of those techniques are approved by the department or the policy, and we're not trained on those in the police department. It'd be inappropriate for me to use a technique from UFC into it'd be inappropriate to use a technique from the UFC in a police situation that that would that would be bad for any number of reasons that. what I asked you was I said this policy that is in evidence is defense exhibit number five this okay. personal police department policy it talks about hard control techniques and I matter of fact, your honor may I publish ma'am approaching defense exhibit number five What I asked you about, sir, is I asked you specifically about what is in this policy manual that is in evidence as a defense exhibit number five. And I read from here, it says, and it's up here, if you need to refresh your recollection of what it says. Officers may use defensive tactic maneuvers, including taking the subject to the ground to control them. That's what I asked you about. You didn't do any of that, did you? I'm sorry, you're asking, did I take the subject to the ground? Did you attempt to use any hard control techniques, such as trying to use defensive tactics maneuvers, or what you talked about, pressure points, or anything of that nature, or taking the subject to the ground, or anything like that? You didn't use hard control tactics, did you? Well, ma'am, and this isn't going to be a yes or no question, I'm sorry. Um, as the situation progressed, at the point where I used my taser in drive stun mode, I still had a resistive subject, and that's the level of force that I felt was appropriate to that. After I'd been disarmed of my taser, and the situa and he escalated the situation to a very high level, um, at that point, I knew I was overpowered, and I knew um, any kind of unarmed defensive tactics weren't going to work for me. I had made that decision based on what had just happened a second ago, and the situation had escalated. Um, that wouldn't be, at that time, it was no longer appropriate because I was already being overpowered. And prior to when I had tased him, that would have been a higher level of force than the taser, as you can see in the policy. So at the, those two different points in time, those, that would have been inappropriate for two different reasons. So the answer is no, you didn't use any hard control techniques. That's correct, and that okay. I did not. And at the time of, that this manual was in effect, I don't know if it still is now, but at the time when this incident happened, the intermediate techniques, such as the taser, that was a lower level of force than the hard control techniques, correct? That's correct. And you also had OC spray. Yes, ma'am. And we have that here in evidence. Yes, ma'am. And you decided not to use the OC spray. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, of the options that you had during the course of this situation, you decided not to use hard control techniques. You did not use any hard control techniques, correct? I did not use hard control techniques. You did not no. use OC spray, correct? That's correct. I did not use OC spray. You did not hit the orange button on your radio, correct? That's correct. It wouldn't have You did not. To... Ma'am, I'm really trying to answer your questions. Yes or no question? It's not a yes or no question, ma'am, and I'm trying to answer it. You did not use this attachment to your radio right here to call dispatch and ask for backup. At the time that that became appropriate to ask for backup, there wasn't enough time. At the car, he was already attacking me. At the car where you felt that you were being overpowered or that the victim in this case was stronger than you, you did not use this radio right here to ask for backup. 
Ma'am, at that time I still had a subject that was a shoplifter and just resisting. And Alleged I thought I could contain the situation. Correct. I'm sorry? Alleged shoplifter, correct? Yes, ma'am, an alleged shoplifter. If I can continue, I thought I could contain the situation by applying some pain to gain compliance. And this is something that we do on a regular basis and works. Uh, every time that I've done it, it, this has worked. So once again, at the time where you realized that he was stronger than you, you did not use your radio here to call for backup. No, ma'am. I used, based on my training and experience, I used techniques that have always worked. So your and training, I followed my policy manual. Your training and experience does not teach you to call for backup when you are dealing with a subject <coughs> who is stronger than you? It's very situational, ma'am. In this situation, okay. I've dealt with a situation like this before many, many times. And in this case, I did what I've always done and has always worked. Mm -hmm. And I've followed policy, I've followed the training and experience that I've had. And unfortunately, in this case, it escalated far beyond that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You never wanted this to happen. I absolutely did not want this to happen. Let's talk about what this victim said to you. You indicated that he said, tase me. Yes, ma'am. You didn't hear him say anything else. No, I heard him say several time. other things. Along with that statement, tase me, that was all he was saying was he was inviting you to tase him. He said, tase me, and then I believe he said, you're not going to fucking tase me. Did he say anything after that? Um... I, you're not gonna. I'm sorry. You said he said you're not gonna fucking tase me. Yeah, I believe you can hear that in the video. Okay. May I approach on retrieve the exhibit? I know. Permission play for the jury, um. So put your hands out of your pocket. That's your voice. Yes, ma'am. Other gentleman's voice is the victim. This is Mr. Chapman. Yes, ma'am. You don't hear what he's saying? Yes, ma'am. All I you heard was tase me. That's not what I said, ma'am. You're t 